In this video, I'll show you guys three examples on how to use the quadratic formula to solve quadratic equations. So let's check this out right here. First of all, we want the equation to be in the standard form. And that is ax squared plus bx plus c. And we want to make sure this is equal to 0. And once we have this right here, we can just plug in the ABC values into this formula and work it out. x is equal to negative b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And this formula is so wonderful because it will solve any quadratic equation for you, including the ones that's not factorable. So the quadratic formula and also the completing the square technique, these are the king and the queen for the quadratic equations because they can solve everything for you, including that one. This is x squared plus 6x plus a is equal to 0. And yes, we have done this twice already. The first time was with factoring, and the second time was with completing the square. Of course, we can also use the quadratic formula to do this. So just for demonstration purpose, let me do this for you guys right here. So you see this right here, it's in a standard form already. That's wonderful. Then we have to identify the A, B, C values, all right? The A is the coefficient of x squared. In our case, A will be 1, right? So let me just write that down for you guys to be super clear. A is equal to 1. And then next, B is the coefficient of x, which is positive 6. B is 6. This is my B. This is my 6. And C is the constant term, which is the 8, like that. And now we can just draw in a, b, c values into this formula and work it out. So by the quadratic formula, which it says, x will be negative b, right? And let me open the parentheses for the b, and let me put down the 6 right here. And I like to tell my students, put down the parentheses whenever you are plugging numbers, especially if the b was negative, this parentheses will be very appreciated, all right? So we have the negative parentheses 6 for the negative b right there. OK, we'll continue. We'll put down the plus minus, and we open that square root right here, right? And then for the inside, we have the b squared. b is, once again, this 6. And let's open the parentheses, put down the 6 inside, and then square that. That's a b squared. And then the formula says we have to do the minus 4. And this means minus 4 times the a. The a value is 1, so let's put on a 1. And let me make the square root longer again. 4ac <laughs> right here, c is 8. So that's what we have right here inside. And you see this is all over, so be sure you draw a big fraction bar. This is all over 2 times a. So we have 2 times a, which is the 1 right here, all right? Let's put it right here like that. And this right here is the setup. And now we just have to work this out. OK, first we have the negative 6. So that's just what it is right here. Let's just write it down. And we keep the plus minus. And let's just open the square root right here, all right? For the inside of the square root, let's do it on the side here. Focus the inside, right? This right here, we have 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times 8, isn't it? Let's work this out real quick. 6 squared, that means 6 times 6, that will give us 36. And then let's bring down the minus. 4 times 1 is 4 times 8, that's 32, right? If you multiply, you get negative 32 like this. At the end, 36 minus 32, that's just a 4, right? This number goes inside of the square root, and that's what we have right here. And now we can still continue, put on a big fraction bar like this. 2 times 1 is the 2 that we have, and now that's pretty much it. But you also have to ask yourself, can we do more? How about square root 4? Let's look at that. This is just a regular number 2, isn't it? Square root of 4 is just a 2. If you can do more, you just keep working it out, all right? So this is going to be negative 6 right here plus minus square root of 4, that's 2, and then all over 2 like this, all right? 
Okay, so what does this mean? Well, x is equal to this, x is equal to that, x is equal to that. And when you have the plus minus, we have to break down into two pieces, right? The first one is x equals to negative 6 plus 2 over this 2. And the other one is x equals to negative 6 minus 2 or over 2, right? And we just have to work them out individually. For this one, x will be to the toughest. Negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4 over the bottom, which is the 2, right? And then if you divide negative 4 over 2, that will give us negative 2. And the other one, x will be negative 6 minus 2, that's negative 8 over 2. Negative 8 divided by 2, that will give us negative 4, right? So we have the two answers that we need. x is equal to negative 2, x is equal to negative 4, like right here. And if you look back to question 1 and question 7, we have the same answer, of course. And you see the, the quadratic formula you know, works right here as well. For this one, we have x squared minus 3x minus 6 is equal to 0. And let me tell you, this is not factorable, right? So whenever you're trying to solve a quadratic equation that's not factorable, we can either complete the square or use the quadratic formula. In this case, to complete a square, remember the magic number formula. We have to do one half of the b value. In our case, the b value is negative 3. Imagine we do one half of negative 3. That's a fraction. We don't like it too well, right? So in this case, let's utilize the quadratic formula, all right? This right here is in the standard form already, so that's wonderful. I can tell you guys the ABC values right away, right? A is going to be the coefficient of x squared, which is the 1 in this case. A is 1. B is the coefficient of x, which in this case is negative 3. Be sure you pay attention to the negative sign, all right? And C value is this, which is negative 6, and that's all we need. And now, plug in the ABC values into this formula, and we are going to work that out, right? Okay, so here we have x is equal to negative b, so let's put down negative, and open the parentheses. The b right here is negative 3, so let's put that inside here. And you see, now this parentheses is very much needed, because the b is negative. This negative was from the formula. This negative is because b is negative 3. Pay attention to the negative signs. Okay, we'll continue. Plus, minus, and also the square root, right? So let's do that. Plus, minus, and open the square root. Inside of the square root, we have b squared. We see the b. Let's go ahead, put a parentheses, and then the b is negative 3. Put it inside, and we square that. And we have the minus 4 times a times c. Minus 4 is c right here, right? So minus 4. And the a is 1. And the c is negative 6. So let's put that down right here. So this right here on the top, right? And it's all over 2 times a. So we just do all over 2 times a, which is 2 times 1, like that. Okay? And that's what we have. That's the setup. Now we just have to work this out. OK, let's see what we get. First of all, we have negative negative 3. That's going to be positive 3. And then we continue plus minus, And then let me open the square root. And let's work out the inside on the side. So just the inside right here. So let me read it down here for you guys. Negative 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 6. OK? All right, negative 3 squared, and you see, you must use this parentheses because in this case, it means we have negative 3 times negative 3. And that will give us what? Positive 9. Right here. Okay? This is positive 9. Be sure you, when you set it up, use parentheses accordingly. And here we have negative 4 times 1, which is negative 4. But then you multiply by negative 6. Negative times negative, that will give you positive. 
and then 4 times 6 that will be 24 like that and then 9 plus 24 that will be just 33 like this okay so we have 3 plus minus square root of 33 this number goes inside and that's what we have and now this is all over 2 times 1 which is just a 2 on the bottom just like that and this is pretty much it and you have to ask yourself can we simplify square root of 33 well we know 3 times 11 is 33 but 3 is not a perfect square it's 11 is also not a perfect square we cannot reduce the square root anymore right and 33 is not a perfect square neither so this is all we can do in fact this is good because in this case we don't have to continue we can just say x is equal to 3 plus minus square root of 33 all over 2. This right here, we can just box the answer. And if you would like, you can use a calculator to get the approximate answer. But this is considered the exact form. And this is it. And now check out one last example for you guys. Let's take a look at this one. We have 2x squared is equal to 3x plus 1. Is this equation in the form that we want? No, right? Therefore, we cannot tell you the a, b, c values. Keep in mind, we must have ax squared plus bx plus c equals to 0 on the right-hand side, isn't it? We don't have a 0 on the right-hand side, so we have to make that happen first, okay? Right here, we have the 3x. How can we get rid of this 3x? Well, we can just go ahead, minus 3x on both sides, isn't it? So that this and that will be cancelled. It. That's wonderful. And then we still have the plus 1 though. Okay, we can minus 1, minus 1, cancel, cancel. And now, the right-hand side, we just have a 0. And for the left-hand side, let me put this down in order that we want, right? 2x squared, and then minus 3x, and then minus 1. And all this is equal to the 0 that we are looking for. And now from here, I can tell you guys the A, B, C values. A is this 2 right here, B is negative 3, and C is negative 1, right? And now I can just plug in the ABC values into this formula and work it out. And let's try to remember this formula, all right? X is equal to negative B, so negative open the parentheses like this. B is negative 3, so put it right here. And then we have the plus minus square root inside we have b square so open the parentheses and put a negative 3 in here so let's do that be sure you square that as well this is the b square and then minus 4ac multiplied by a which is 2 right here and the c value here is the negative 1 so let's do that like that and all this is over 2 times a, which is 2 times 2. And that's the setup based on the quadratic formula. And now we can just work this out. Let's see. Negative, negative 3. That will give us positive 3. Plus, minus. Let's just keep it as how it is. And then let me open a square root right here. And let's work this out on the side as usual. So let me put it down here. Negative 3 squared minus 4. 4 times 2 times negative 1, right? Keep in mind, use this parenthesis. Negative 3 and then square means negative 3 times negative 3. We get positive 9. And then for this right here, negative 4 times 2, this right here is negative 8, times negative 1 becomes plus 8, right? You see the negative times negative becomes positive. And then you multiply this out, you get 8. And then 9 plus 8 is just 17. This number goes inside, right? So we have 3 plus minus square root of 17 at the moment. And then this is all over 2 times 2, which is 4 on the denominator. And then you have to ask yourself, can we simplify square root of 17? Can we break it down? No, right? So that's the good news, isn't it? Because this is it. We don't have to do anything anymore. That's it. 
Coming up next, I will have a series of videos. I call them the quadratic equations battles. Be sure to check them out because that way that can really master your skills in solving quadratic equations. And if you haven't done so already, be sure you subscribe. Thank you.